is nomination day. The countdown to elections continues. Welcome to InfoHub. AP and UAFC coalition other parties submit their lists of candidates to GCOM and CJIA to undergo several changes to further increase productivity. It is Friday, January 10, and it's 44 days to our Golden Jubilee Republic anniversary. Thank you for joining us. The AP and UAFC coalition today presented its list of candidates to the Guyana Elections Commission at the Umani Yana as the country prepares for general and regional elections on March 2. The head of state made the comments minutes after emerging from the Umani Yana where he, along with coalition members, presented the party's list of candidates for the upcoming polls to the Guyana Elections Commission. I am satisfied that all six partners have complied with those criteria about gender, about generation, about geographical spread, about competence. I am very satisfied that we went through the process and we've got the best list. And it's a winning list. President Granger said that the coalition has a proven record noting that the list of persons presented will do well in the National Assembly, in the Regional Democratic Council and the Cabinet. The head of state led the 20-member team alongside leader of the Alliance for Change and Minister of Public Security, Kamrad Ramjatan, and Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon. Earlier in the day, the President and the Minister Ramjatan joined thousands of Guyanese as they marched in support of the coalition. Supporters left parade ground and journeyed in droves, to the Umani Yana, leader of the Alliance for Change, Kemrat Ramjatan. It's a great historic day for us, and um, we are all full of confidence of what's going to happen on 2nd of March. But of course, we have to go through the processes here of ensuring that our list goes in. And um, I am very proud that we have this crowd that will be marching with us to the place where we're going to give the list in. InfoHub also spoke with a few ministers en route to the Umani Yana. I am very excited and elated about today's activity. As you can see, hundreds of supporters are around us and I know that we are going to have a massive turnout here today. I'm excited. I'm excited more so because we have the best list of all the parties. I know that we have the winning list. I'm confident that we have the best people on our list. And so um, that makes me feel good. Everybody here is excited and they want to get it over with, you know. Um, we, we feel that how we've assembled the winning slate, you know what I mean, led of course by President Art David Arthur Granger. Uh, we have a combination of youth, we have a combination of experienced persons, and there are persons like me who's in between, um, you know. So we do feel that the, the team that we have put together and we'll be submitting shortly to GCOM. Um, will definitely propel us in the decade of development. Today is another historic step, uh, another important step in this very historic occasion. It's about who will lead Guyana in the new, e in the new economy, the oil and gas economy. Uh, from what we have seen here, the energy and the enthusiasm which follows on the manifestation that we saw at the launch on the 3rd and subsequently at Hope Town, it is clear that the majority of the people of Guyana want to see continuity. The APNU AFC was the first party to submit its list to the elections body. For InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Meantime, the opposition PPPC and several small political parties also presented their list to the elections body. Political parties seeking a chance to lead Guyana made it official on Friday with the submission of their list of candidates for nomination day. Among those submitting their list of candidates were the People's Progressive Party Civic and several other small parties. PPPC's presidential candidate Dr. Irfan Ali said the list is very diverse and represents all of Guyana. A list that embodies competence, experience, youth, energy, commitment, a list that represents all of Guyana. However, Ali, who is currently before the courts for fraud charges, brushed aside questions saying his main focus is the upcoming elections. Leader of the United Republican Party, Dr. Vishnu Bandhu, said his party will be contesting in all 10 regions in both general and regional elections and is looking to make a difference. I know we will make a difference in Guyana. Yes, we're trying, we're trying for decades, yes, but, you know, we'll see the result this time. A new party contesting the elections, the Liberty and Justice Party's presidential candidate, Lennox Schumann, said he will be working to represent the indigenous peoples. He said they 
will be contesting in every region except regions 3, 5, 6, and 10. If you look across Guyana, the majority of people who are underrepresented at the National Assembly are indigenous. Don't mind the very few who continue to, what I'd say, just be tokens in Parliament. I mean, we've seen seven indigenous parliamentarians and none of them, not a single one of them has represented the indigenous peoples. Of the 19 political parties that were expected to contest the upcoming elections, 13 submitted their list of candidates. Isaiah Brophitt for InfoHub. Aiming for the sky, the Chedi Jagan International Airport will undergo several changes this year to further increase its productivity. Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable Jaipal Sharma, during a recent media briefing said the Chedi Jagan International Airport has undergone significant improvements over the past few years. In 2015, the revenue was one billion and thirty-four million, and in 2019, the revenue or the income was three billion four hundred and seventy-four million. If we should compare the expenditure in relation to the airport in 2015, it was seven hundred sixty-seven million, and in 2019. It is one billion five hundred six million. So the uh, airport cooperation collected three point four billion for 2019, which is a remarkable achievement. According to the minister, the airport recorded twenty two thousand five hundred thirty three more arriving passengers in 2019 than it had in 2018. There was a seven percent increase in international passengers and an overall 4% increase. With COPA and American Airlines increasing international aircraft movement, Guyana is expected to be graced by JetBlue Airways and Eastern Airlines for nonstop service from John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York to the Chedi Jagan International Airport from April 2nd. As 2020 progresses, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure has big plans for the Chedi Jagan International Airport. Ongoing and new projects Construction of building to accommodate additional airlines and stakeholder office. Where we at? Consultancy contract awarded and work commenced. Also have enhanced CCTV and access control system with video analytics. Project commenced and will be completed by May 2020. According to the minister, contracts for self-check-in kiosks and passenger tracking software will be completed by January 2020. Reporting for InfoHub, Gavin Lewis. As part of its plans to bridge the gap between the hinterland and coastal regions and its commitment to cleaner energy solutions, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure has made significant improvements in several indigenous communities. 3,490 residents of hinterland communities are now beneficiaries of a $165 million lighting project implemented by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure through the Guyana Energy Agency in 2019. Addressing members of the media at the Ministry's Year in Review briefing, Minister of Public Infrastructure the Honorable David Patterson said thousands of lights were installed with energy conservation in mind. For Hinterland, we would have, for a program cost of $165 million, we would have changed out for the hinterland areas, obviously to the energy conservation is prime, paramount from there. We would have changed out 22,177 inefficient lights with new LED lights. The minister further noted that the lights were changed with the aim of benefiting both consumers and producers of the resources. It's a benefit to both the consumer as well as the producer of the power because obviously the energy lights are more efficient, so it burns less energy. And that um, was to approximate 3,490 uh, beneficiaries. And those are in all the hinterland areas, Mabarumas, Matthews Ridge, Port Kaituma, Madia, Letem, and Kokwani. Minister Patterson also gave some highlights of the projects the ministry is optimistic to complete in 2020 under the Hinterland Electrification Company, Incorporated. These projects include upgrades in Kokwani, Port Kaituma, Kato, Kamwata, and the extension of the electricity grid from Bamiya to Silverhill. Shaquille Bourne, Foreign for Hub. 
When the news returns, Ministry of Education officially hands over steel plants to two secondary schools in Region 6 and Mocha farmers get 300 coconut plants. Details of these and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. A commitment by the Ministry of Education to the Port Morant Secondary School and the Skeldon High School was met on Thursday when steel pans were officially handed over to the institutions. Handing over the items to the head teachers of the school was Minister of Education Honorable Dr. Nicolette Henry. In brief remarks, she noted that the decade of development is starting on a good note in Region 6, as education continues to be a priority for the coalition government. This morning, I am particularly pleased to be here um, not only just to hand over steel bands and to commission that set of steel bands that you are receiving today, but also to pledge the government's commitment to the education sector and to the development of all of our people, whether you live in Georgetown or you live in Port Morant or New Amsterdam or any community, you are important. And so we know that education must be delivered in a holistic way, and that is why we are undergoing curriculum reform. Since 1976, this is the first time Guyana has taken that bold step to reform its curriculum. Expressive arts, the minister said, are a large part of the reform process. She assured that students and teachers will be given a wide range of opportunities, not only in mainstream activities, but extracurricular activities. Administrator of the Unit of Allied Arts, Lauren Barker King, said that those who have taken up the steel pan plane have improved in all areas, including creativity, discipline, academic performance, and self confidence. Both head teachers thanked the minister and her team for the donation. Thus far, 31 steel bands have been presented to primary and secondary schools across Guyana. Neola Damon, InfoHub. <laughs> Cane Farm Mocha farmers were the first to benefit from the Ministry of Agriculture-sponsored Rural Agricultural Infrastructure Development Program for 2020. On Thursday, a total of 300 coconut plants were distributed in the area. Working his fields for over five years, Delvin Thomas said his farm has developed greatly and any other future assistance from the government will be welcomed. I'm extremely grateful for it. For one, it can benefit me. For one, I ain't got to push my hand in my pocket to buy plants. Um, secondly, I ain't got to worry about um, floods um, as before, because we've seen the infrastructure is working and the lands are draining pretty well. Another farmer, Cyrus Thomas, who has been planting for almost a decade, echoed similar sentiments. The cleaning. And everything now we're getting, we're thankful, really thankful for it. Mocha Extension Officer Mitzi Barker told InfoHub that the distribution of the planting material is among other crops requested by the farmers. The Agriculture Ministry continues to reiterate calls for interested residents to join the RAID initiative to push cooperative farming. For InfoHub, I am Kellen Rover. Well known from the Times 2 band, Adrian Dutchin joined the Carib Soca Monarch competition in 2004, which was the beginning of sweet soca music coming from Guyana. As the countdown continues to Guyana's Golden Jubilee as a republic, here is Niola Damon with another Mashramani special report. I wanna see your pushback. we first started Soka Monarch, um, it was the only like like competition in Guyana um, that represented Soka music. So uh, my first Soka Monarch, I think I got third, I think I got third, and then um, we went back for another year, and then I got first that year, and I, it, it ended up three Soka Monarch, six Road March titles, but um, I think the Soka Monarch is a great thing, it's a beautiful thing that any artist that like um, want to be known and any artist that that that's one that want to get out there and create a, a name for themselves and have their own little forum Soka Monarch does it so Hansen Makar has after them. Dutchin was never a lover of Soka but with encouragement he decided to test the waters. To be honest I was never really uh, a Soka person per se um, but 
um, Boris Mo Simon, the um, CEO of Cross Color Records, um, he said the only way he's going to sign me to the record label is if I do soca music. And I, I know nothing about soca, and he was like, I'll teach you about soca music, and I'll, I'll show you how to do it. And he did, and I just developed and started working on the art form, and, and I just made it my own. He noted that this opportunity given by Simon has opened many doors for him and has placed Guyana on the map. Such in hopes that contestants from the Soka, Chutney and Calypso competitions will use their platform to make a difference. In 2005, he was crowned the King of Carib Soka Monarch, being the second performer to win the competition and continued to reign in 2006 and again in 2008. He is the only performer to date to have won the Soka Monarch in Guyana three times. Dutchin also won the Road March competition four times in the years 2004, 2006, and 2012. He now resides in the United States with his family but still continues to make a stir in Guyana. Neil Ademan, InfoHub. Election tip. As we prepare for Elections Day on March 2, if you haven't done so as yet, check to ensure your name is on the revised list of electors. Voting is your democratic right. That's all for today. Connect with us on our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Goodbye for now.